When a person is sexually assaulted, medical professionals can't perform a rape kit. They collect DNA evidence and take pictures of injuries. But some advocates have discovered more than 100,000 rape kits nationwide are sitting in evidence rooms and have not been tested. Omaha police are still working to get us data on untested kits. Lincoln police tell us in the first three months of 2017, 13 kits had been collected. Five have been sent to the lab. Tonight, I look at why some are untested and what's being done here in Omaha. So I will have a copy of that kit and what was observed in the kit for my investigators. Diagrams to mark where scratches and bite marks appear. Stickers to measure bruises. The physical effects of a sexual assault gathered, inventoried, and put in a box. The emotional impact, there's no box for that. It definitely has made trusting people a little bit harder. This 17 year old girl we will call Jordan talked with us with her mom present. She says a man sexually assaulted her two years ago. I would like to see them test the kits in that way for like the people that may not have as much evidence. They could potentially find something out of that and ease their mind a little bit. She had a rape kit performed, but says it has not been tested. The Joyful Heart Foundation runs endthebacklog.org. The group has identified more than 175,000 untested kits nationwide. They believe every kit should be tested. It's part of the investigation, but it's only one piece of the investigation. Omaha Police Sergeant Marlene Novotny says if a victim does not want the case to move forward, the kit likely will not be tested. Um, because in the end, it's nobody but that victim on the stand facing their accuser. If I have a victim who uh, doesn't feel they can do that or doesn't feel safe enough to do that, why would I want to make her life more difficult? And she says they review the inventory of a kit and sometimes the information inside will not help the case. It's a known person and um, that individual is saying it's consensual and the other person is saying it's not consensual. Um, a testing of that kit would only show that that there was an engagement in sexual activity. It's not going to prove the crime. But Novotny says they still work to solve those crimes and they save all kits conducted. Last year we saw 400 patients. The year before was 314 patients and the year before that was 198. Ann Boatwright works with sexual assault victims at Methodist. She attributes those soaring numbers of sexual and domestic assault cases to better reporting and a growing understanding of victims' needs. She testified at the legislature last year to improve systems in Nebraska. The state approved a universal kit to make the process smoother. Every part of this process is designed with the victim in mind, including the exam room. It's in a secured area, the door is locked, and there's a bathroom here. After the exam, if a victim chooses, they can take a shower, which many do. And the most important thing is that we make sure that you are treated and that you have the connection to the resources so that you are surviving through this. I would like to see him go to jail and get what he deserves and not be anywhere near um, people that you could potentially harm. How to handle rape kits is a question still being debated, but everyone agrees the emotional effects cannot and should not be contained. Boatwright said something powerful to me. That first point of contact a person makes after an assault is a big indicator of whether she or he will pursue legal action. So if a child, a friend, a relative comes to you after a sexual assault, the number one thing you can do, believe, not blame. Let the officials sort out the details. We have a list of resources in our community with this story at 3newsnow.com.